Once again, we are being asked to believe that the vested corporate interests that are rolling these technologies out in a coordinated fashion are doing so for the benefit of the public. That this technology is to help save the Earth. And once again, we are being duped. The technocratic agenda is not about saving the Earth. It is not about helping the public. It is not even about making money. It is about complete control over every aspect of our daily life. So there's two levels, and the way I look at technocracy, there's two levels operating at the same time. There's the, the operational side of it that has to do with things like smart grid, that have to do with things like uh, you know various technocratic innovations. Surveillance is another big hot button for technocracy. These are operational issues. From a strategic point of view, which is where the Rockefeller type people operate, it's, it's a different view of where it's headed. On an operational level, it's headed towards scientific dictatorship. And it doesn't, you don't have to be a visionary to figure that one out You really anymore. You don't. It's there. But on a strategic basis, what's happening is that there's a massive resource grab going on all over the planet. And when I say resource grab, <clears throat> you have to put yourself in Rockefeller's shoes and the banker's shoes, the Rothschild's shoes and whatever and say, what do you do when money wears out? What do you do when you sucked all the value you can out of the monetary systems you created? What's left? <laughs> well, it's, you and I don't think about those sort of things. So we don't have that much money. But these people at the top, the, especially the bankers, they they. I'm sure they stay up at night thinking, what's, what's after money? What comes after money? The Rockefeller family, especially, has always been a resource-intensive family. That's what oil was all about in the first place. It was a resource. And they understood that energy would be the most important factor in the world over any other type of resource. They understood that. That's why they wanted to create a monopoly over energy. Well, today, as money has been sucked dry, the only thing left to do is to make a grab for the resources themselves. And that's what sustainable development is all about, is taking the resources of the world away from you and me, away from private companies that aren't part of the clique, if you will. And putting them into a global common trust that will be managed by them for their benefit. This is really nothing more than neo-feudalism, again, where the resources are owned by a few and everybody else gets to operate with those resources at their pleasure and discretion. The technocrats and the functionaries of this agenda like Hubbard and his colleagues in Technocracy, Inc., pioneered this idea because they believed that they, the technocrats and engineers, would be able to solve the world's problems. But the oligarchs and bankers who funded their ideas into existence did so because it would help them to become the rulers of a system so perfectly crafted that no resource, no commodity, no person would be beyond their control. And now, in the 21st century, that technocratic vision is coming into view. And it is being helped along by a public that believes the post-carbon future represents the end of the oligarchy. They couldn't be more wrong. Oil. It was never about oil. It was about control. Control over energy and production and consumption. Control over the world's resources. Control over the population. Control over humanity itself. Every other thing that the elite put forward is nothing more than a pretext for what they've been after since the beginning. So as I cover in Tragedy and Hope 101, I discuss this concept of the elite seeking to rule all habitable portions of the world and they don't want to secure that so that they can then have it taken away from them. So they come up with pretexts that they can sell 
both to the public, but also to the administrative uh, class that justifies what it is that they're trying to do. They need to. So whether it's global warming hysteria or whether it's technocracy or whether it's uh, Agenda 2030 or whether it's eugenics, there's a common thread that runs through all of this. And that common thread is the desire to consolidate and exercise coercive power. In the uh, case of eugenics, it's the desire to consolidate and exercise the ultimate power, which is the power over who ultimately is going to live or die, who will be permitted to exist in the gene pool from here forward. The picture is bleak and made all that much bleaker by the fact that so many have been duped into believing that the oligarch's ultimate agenda, an agenda of technocratic control, micromanagement of our daily lives, and, ultimately, the elimination of the cannon fodder from the gene pool, is in fact in their own best interest. The oligarchs, shielded behind their smokescreen of sustainable development and post-carbon economy, are closer than ever before to achieving their true goal of total control. But if the people perish from lack of knowledge of this agenda, then understanding is the first step toward the solution. It's hard to fight an enemy that you don't recognize or can't see. That's the biggest problem in the world today, in my opinion, is that people have no visibility whatsoever of this issue. They've covered their tracks so well that nobody can see them. How can you fight an enemy that you don't know? I think I think the famous Chinese general Sun Tzu brought that up hundreds of years ago. You can't fight an enemy that you don't know. <laughs> First, we have to recognize who the enemy is. Well, big oil conquered the world because monopolization of all resources on the planet is the goal. And to get to that goal, you have to monopolize the energy aspects uh, of, of, of people uh, around the planet, but you also have to control the food, the, the, the actual energy for the human beings whose energy you want to control. If you control those two aspects, the green revolution and the gene revolution, then you're able to control the entire planet, every resource on it, um, and basically extinguish freedom uh, for the rest of history. So how Big Oil conquered the world was already done in the movie. Why Big Oil Conquered the World has to do with the complexities of controlling populations, not for money, because these are the people that print money out of nothing and charge us for it. So really, it's a study of power. So why did they want to do this to the rest of us? Because they could and because we were tolerant so far and haven't resisted enough to, to make it stop. So that's where we find ourselves today, becoming informed on the history so that we can actually plot our, our course in the future to, to, to map or chart out a course and actually get to some place that resembles cognitive liberty and physical freedom and justice for all. Big oil, big pharma, genetic engineering, the green revolution, the environmental movement, eugenics, technocracy. Not one person in a thousand can detail the historical development of these ideas or the people and the agenda that connects them. But if you have watched this documentary, you are now that one person in a thousand. The question is, what are you going to do with this information? As the oligarch's quest for total control comes into view, it's difficult to remember that it all started a century and a half ago with Devil Bill Rockefeller, a two-bit snake oil salesman always on the run from the last group of marks he managed to con. In a way, nothing has changed but the scope of the con and the number of marks who have fallen for the routine. But now that you know the snake oil that is being fed to the public, the only question that matters is, are you going to drink it? Down in Pennsylvania, Petroleum, petroleum, we must all have 
have some The oily fever, don't you see Infects most every live Yankee From north, from east and west They come for petroleum oil Oil, oil, oil Oh, petroleum Oil, oil, oil Petroleum Hello. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, the writer, director, narrator, and creator of the documentary you've just been watching, Why Big Oil Conquered the World. And if you have just watched this documentary all the way through, as well as the previous documentary on how big oil conquered the world, then as I say towards the end, you really are now better informed than the vast majority of the public on these issues and on the history of this picture that I'm trying to paint here. And the real question is, what are you what are we going to do with this information? Well, the first thing I'd like to encourage you to do is to go to corporatereport.com slash big oil. That is the, the destination where you will be able to find audio and video copies of the entire documentary, How Big Oil and Why Big Oil Conquered the World, uh, all there for your free download and perusal and as a handy link that you can share with others if, if and when you're ready to start sharing this information. But perhaps the most important part of corporatereport.com slash big oil is the hyperlinked transcript. Everything that is said in this documentary, including sources to all the source documents from which this information came, is in that transcript. It is a very important tool for people to use when you are ready to start delving into this information in greater detail, because as much ground as I was able to cover in the three hours of this combined documentary, there's still so much more that needs to be said and so much more information that helps to color in this image that I've only sketched the broad outlines of here. 